I moved to New York when I was 23. It's the one place on earth where you can dream of doing anything and then find somebody who will teach you how to do it. One of my dreams was magic, of course. And you know what? It still is. Now I'm the guy who gets to mentor people coming up. It gives me a kick, and passing it on is the only way magic survives. She's good. New York is a great place for magic because you can play to an audience of any size. There are enormous stages, but there's a cafe society too where you go table to table, you get people involved, you bring them in, you bring them close, and meet your audience face to face. For me, there's just nothing like that. The routine I'm doing tonight won me a top award as the best close-up magician. It would have been easy to stop working on the magic after winning a prize like that, but I can't help it. I keep working on it. There are 32 separate effects in what I'll do tonight. Penn and Teller may bust me, but they're gonna have to work for it. Give it up for master manipulator, Jim Vines.
Thank you so much. I mean, you don't have to work another day in your life if you can produce that kind of money. Well, if I can do that every day, can you imagine? No, I can't. <laughs> Especially the credit cards. Yes. Does classic magic evolve over time? Absolutely. Uh, this, this effect that I did tonight, which is producing money, has been around at least since 1852 when Robert Houdin did something called the miser's dream. And he would reach into the air and catch coins and coins and coins and drop them in a bucket. And so the idea of combining those two things together, but taking it sort of to the next level, that was just, uh, you know, we, we say we stand on the shoulders of giants. And he was certainly a giant. Do you think that there are old tricks that have been lost over time? Absolutely. And every so often, someone will surface with an ancient manuscript that hasn't been seen in hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's just a joy, because you, when you see something that seems brand new, but it's yeah. really hundreds of years old, yeah. and you feel like you're meeting that magician That's today, yeah. you know? OK, Jim, let's see if we can cash in your money magic for a Fool Us trophy. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, boys? We're ready. Oh, Jim, you know, it's so amazing to see. I mean, obviously, total pro, been doing this forever. This is a lot, a lot of work. But to do an act that, that masquerades as a trick done at a table and actually explodes over to the whole stage is a really beautiful thing. You do not expect a table act to be that big. And to be able to do a uh, really stage magic illusion act all based on sitting at a table barehanded, starting with just a, uh, a little slip from an ATM is just brilliant. We were all prepared for just a coin trick, and then you end up doing so much more than that, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And one of the best techniques you use is using one trick to cover another, to cover another, to cover another, so that it's very hard for the audience to backtrack on what's happened. There's so much surprise all the way through this. It's just terrific. Of course, in terms of style, there's a lot of slidini. You have Dove Productions, you have camouflage, you have all sorts of stuff. And it's also great to see an act that's, that you've obviously been working for years and years and is a huge crowd pleaser. And we loved every single second of it. All the innovations were wonderful, but we don't think you fooled us. But man, we loved it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You didn't fool them, but you sure entertained us all. Oh, Am yeah. I right? You are right. And I just have to say one thing. This was such an honor, such a privilege to be here. But also, I must be one of the first people in history to leave Las Vegas with a suitcase full of cash. <laughs> so I Jim, am super excited. Jim Vines, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everybody. So